So I recently wrote an article called Wrestling for Jiu-Jitsu, the best wrestling positions for every stage of your jiu-jitsu journey. And the reason why I wrote this is because a few weeks ago, someone at the gym said, hey, Jordan, how do you recommend a beginner do to wrestling? Uh, you know, who's a jiu-jitsu athlete, someone with little experience and someone who's advanced. How do you go about teaching them uh, wrestling? So I, that got my wheels turning. And I was like, you know what? I have a you know, a small idea of how I'd go about it, but I was like, let me do some research just to really support how I would go about it. So I did a little research on the most effective takedowns for no-gi jiu-jitsu, and I stumbled into a breakdown of takedowns and sweeps at ADCC 2022 by the grappling conjecture. So according to him, all of the champions except Gordon Ryan worked mainly from top position and wrestled to get there. Wrestling was the key to most of the champions' success. And of that wrestling... The single leg was king. I'm not going to get into all the data, but the single leg was king because it was attempted the most and it had a relatively good success rate, which was 17, well, 18%. And then the double leg was similar with 23 completions and 85 failures for a slightly higher 21.2% success rate. So you could see all that data here. It's great. There are a lot of other wrestling positions and moves that were used, but the single and double were the kings or the leaders here. So th some of those other notable takedowns were snap downs, body locks, mat returns, and the Uchimata, um, but more on that later. So what's also super cool, and I never would have guessed this when I started writing it, is that the single leg was also used from the bottom position. So Grappling Conjecture says, the single leg was also the common sweep with 12 completions, 34 failures. This was followed by half guard sweeps, although they seem a bit less effective. One of the most effective ways to sweep was to try to submit your opponent and then come on top if you can't get it. This had a greater than 50% success rate. Coming up on a body lock to sweep was also very high percentage. So I don't know about you guys, but who could have guessed wrestling would be more effective from the bottom than traditional sweeps? And he says, overall, it looked like wrestling up was a bit more effective than traditional sweeps. I think this might be due to people wanting to play it a bit safe and not just dive into people's guards. There are a number of people who aren't good at defending these types of wrestle-ups, and also they can be used over and over again with little setup. So if you're interested in that sweep data, he also has it here. You can see single legs, like takedowns, are far and away the most used uh, tool here. And then there's also the double leg body lock, when body lock is surprisingly successful from the bottom. So wrestling works from the bottom, and apparently it's more successful than a lot of traditional sweeps. So... That was news to me. I thought that was a super cool finding from this article. And uh, yeah, so my main takeaway is just from looking at this data point from the grappling conjecture is that it's absolutely obvious you need wrestling to compete with the best. And that's, you know, from bottom or just standing. So you basically need it in all positions in jujitsu, which is huge. And then it's also super apparent that if you do start wrestling, you should focus on single legs double legs, and body locks. And I definitely recommend newcomers focus on those skills, but this doesn't paint the full picture because this is us looking at a jiu-jitsu tournament, ADCC 2022. And to be fair, jiu-jitsu wrestling is abysmal compared to actual wrestling. And obviously that makes sense because jiu-jitsu has other areas of the game, whereas wrestlers really focus a lot more on their feet. So to really understand what newcomers and people in jiu-jitsu should learn for wrestling or focus on, we need to look at wrestling itself. So, on the wrestling front, the go-behind is the number one takedown. If you look at any stats on you know the best wrestlers in the world and what they're good at, a go-behind is usually there. You'll see the most takedown at the world level is, is go-behinds. There are a few articles I saw, I remember years ago, about the go-behind being number one and reattacks uh, being the number one way to take people down. I could not find them for this article, but all of the best wrestlers agree with this. Uh, so here's actually Brandon Reed. I believe he was a three-time Naya wrestling champion in college. Uh, he has an awesome video of the most effective takedown in BJJ, which is the go-behind. So if you're curious on how to do it, it's right here in this video. But also don't just take it from me or Brandon Reed here. Olympic champion and five-time world medalist David Taylor also agrees that the go-behind is the number one takedown at the highest level. It's an easy way to capitalize on your opponent's failed takedown attempts, 
And as you go to circle behind, once you sprawl on someone, you also a lot of times can access their legs and get to your own takedown. So it's a good way to get to your own offense. There's also a, uh, a group called Quant Wrestling. They analyzed the 2019 NCAA D1 Wrestling Championships, and they came to the same conclusion. So they say, tie-up attacks may be our most broad category of attacks, but the data shows they are hands down the most effective as well as the safest attacks. A tie-up attack is any upper body attack with the goal to just take their opponent down. We're talking front headlocks, slide bys, shucks, drags, and go-behinds. They might make up only 9% of all attacks, but they actually have the highest finish rate at 47% with the lowest chance of opponent scoring at only 5%. So go-behinds, obviously that's only one part of what they're talking about here, but that can kind of be lumped in with the front headlocks and the shucks. A lot of that is the same position and even drags. So slide buys are more on the feet, but um, yeah, these attacks are all super high level, highly effective, have a high finish rate compared to most other takedowns, and they take advantage of your opponent making mistakes. So other cool things that they found from the 2019 NCAA D1 tournament is that similar to ADCC 2022, single legs were the most used takedown. I'll let you guys read that if you want. And then where it got really interesting is that the high crotch was actually more effective than the single leg in terms of finishing. So that was another cool thing that I didn't really expect. Um, The only thing about the high crotch is that you shoot with your head outside a lot of times. So while it is effective in wrestling, it can uh, be to your detriment because it also has the highest rate of opponents scoring at 10% of the time. And in jujitsu, you also have the threat of guillotines and all sorts of head and arm chokes and things. So with the high crotch, you really got to be careful in jujitsu and obviously in wrestling too. So with all that being said, it's obvious that anyone looking to improve their stand-up game in jujitsu is required to learn single legs, double legs, go behinds, and the front headlock position. And there are a lot of variations of the above skills. So where should you start? So I'd say... As a beginner jiu-jitsu athlete learning wrestling for the first time, learn takedowns that do not require the penetration step, at least at the beginning. The penetration step is a super awkward, unnatural movement. It doesn't build confidence, and it slows development. I found that especially to be true for older athletes who are just starting jiu-jitsu and wanting to learn wrestling. Um, I know a few examples are at our gym. We have some guys who are you know, in their 30s or early 40s, And I try to show them the penetration step, and they're like, nah, man, this ain't it. My knees do not like this. And they just want to learn stuff that gives them confidence and that they can do easily. So in my opinion, jiu-jitsu athletes who are learning wrestling for the first time should focus on hand fighting. So this is like simple stuff like inside ties, uh, collar tie pulls, fakes, easy things like that. We're going to use hand fighting to get to our leg attacks, and one of those simplest ones is the snatch single leg. The snatch single leg is really easy to do in jiu-jitsu because in jiu-jitsu, everyone's stances are a lot higher than they are in wrestling. So that means you can change your level and just grab the leg, or sometimes you don't even have to change the level. You can just step in and grab a leg, and then there are all sorts of easy finishes and things to do from there. Then, if that fails, we have the blast double leg, which is really explosive way to just run through your opponent. So all you do is you step in, plant your forehead right in their sternum, and pull their legs out as you drive. This one's super effective. I taught someone this uh, a few years ago when I first started jiu-jitsu. And uh, I think we had a competition like two weeks later. And next thing I know, I see a highlight video of him double-legging, blast double-legging people without going to his knees at his first comp. And then he won gold. So it was awesome to see. And then next up, we got the sprawl front headlock position. So the number one position in wrestling. Might as well learn that for jujitsu. And I especially say that because if you can master the sprawl and front headlock position, you will be an absolute headache to deal with for elite wrestlers since we have to respect the choke. So what I mean by that is if an elite wrestler shoots on you and you manage to sprawl on them, in wrestling, we would still have a ton of options to try to finish the takedown and we would keep our neck out because we're not worried about getting choked in jujitsu. If we just keep our neck out and try to finish, you know, 10 plus ways, we know how 
you can just catch my neck and guillotine me or work into some sort of head and arm stuff. So we really don't like that position in jujitsu, and it really nullifies a lot of our game there. So if you can get there and you know you're going against a good wrestler, that might be a place to really focus. And then the last stuff I have for, uh, or last techniques I have for beginners is the ankle pick and the knee pick because they're both pretty low risk in low energy ways to take your opponent down. And they also give you an attack across the body. So snatch single leg, you're usually reaching for their lead leg that's right in front of you. So that's on, you know, the same side as like your lead leg. The blast double is stepping and hitting them right in the middle of their chest. And then the ankle pick knee pick is their leg is on the opposite side of you. So you have to go reach and catch that far ankle or far knee. So I like that you kind of have these options to uh, same side, double leg to the middle, or grabbing an ankle or a knee on the far side. And then for those of you who are comfortable wrestling, or you know maybe it's been a few months or a year, and you're starting to do jujitsu competitions, I definitely think you should level up your hand fighting, add in another single leg, and maybe some more tie-up attacks. So I highly recommend fakes and wrist snaps. Um, you can definitely work this as a beginner, but... I think once you start to compete and stuff, this is what really gets your opponents off balance and makes it even easier to get to your leg attacks and um, your offense. Because when your opponent's off balance, they're not thinking about attacking you. They're thinking about regaining their balance. And while they're doing that, you can exploit it. Next up is a sweep single. This one's been super helpful for me against bigger guys when I've done the absolute division. It, nothing worse than trying to step in and snatch single someone who's 220 plus pounds and their leg is as much as you, weighs as much as you. So the sweep single, you could get out on an angle, and then it's a lot easier to finish. And then the last one I have here is body locks. I debated putting this in the beginner category or intermediate. You could, depending on how quickly you catch on to this stuff, you could do it as a beginner or intermediate. Uh, but the body lock is a highly effective way to get your opponent down without getting their legs, and it's really useful to have this in case you cannot get to their legs and you need to get a takedown some other way also with body locks uh, especially in wrestling you get rewarded really well for getting an opponent straight to their back because in wrestling you get a lot of points for that in jujitsu now once you throw them down to their back now they're usually pinned down you have a lot of pressure from the get-go and it's easy to start advancing up the body so all of these tools here as an intermediate is just to get used to being unpredictable, keeping your opponent off balance, uh, having a single leg that works against bigger people, and then ultimately having um, you know an ace in your pocket, which is the body locks in case leg attacks don't work. And then last but not least, for those of you who are competing at the highest level, like ADCC and things like that, you should really focus on reattacks, which is my opponent is attacking me, I defend, and then I immediately go into mine. I have a video on this I'll show you in a second. Another one is stand-ups. So in ADCC, wrestling is really rewarded in the rule set. So if you are getting taken down and you want to get back up and get to your wrestling, or you, you notice your opponent's really tired and they're just hanging on, you need to be able to stand right up to your feet and get back to wrestling. So a lot of times it's really simple. Like if you go to turtle position, you can catch an arm, isolate it to one side with both your hands, come up to your feet, now get right to your attacks. And a lot of times guys aren't expecting to get taken down right when you stand up. So you could stand up, turn, and go right after them. So really like stand-ups. Duck-unders, this could be intermediate or advanced. Just another easy way to take your opponents back. And it requires a little finesse and slickness and timing. So I, I definitely recommend it later in the sequence and not as a beginner because it just um, it's something you do when you're a little more comfortable in the hand fight. And then slide buys and throw buys are the same thing as duck unders. Easy way to catch the back, and it requires a little more finesse. So, of those skills, I think the reattack is the greatest. I mean, other than the sprawl go behind, reattacks are right up there for what the best guys in wrestling do. And the guys who are really good at those tend to win matches and win at the highest level. So, here's an example of 50 reattacks from the NCAA tournament in 2024. So I'll start it over here. So he shoots, he goes behind, he gets to a leg, head takes him down. Same thing, shot, right to a knee pick, takedown. 
post high crotch, misses right to a leg. So you see a lot of this comes from the go behind. These guys are circling around and then getting right to a leg. See that? That's how most reattacks look, and it's super effective. Great stuff. So if you want more examples, just check out this video. It's on the article. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all the positions, depending on if you're a beginner, in intermediate, or advanced. I think you know you should definitely be focusing on these positions. Obviously, there are many more you could be doing that aren't these positions. But if you want to get good and master the basics and the fundamentals, these are the positions you should really be working on. And while you're working on them, you should be play wrestling all the time. All that is is giving 50 to 60% resistance with your partner. You're not going all out live, but maybe you just start in on a snatch single leg and you just work from there. So if you get a takedown, then you just reset. If you don't, then you let your opponent or your partner hit a nice go behind and get a takedown on you. It's just figuring out how these positions work with a little resistance. It's a lot easier to do this when you're just given 50 to 60% resistance because it's one, it's more fun and you're just giving and taking things. Uh, it's not as hard on the body. It's a great workout. And sometimes sparring is harder than live because sometimes in live when we get tired, we just shut down collar tie and just hang out ear to ear. So I really like sparring. It's definitely why I got a little, pretty good at wrestling is because I just learned how to flow and have fun and explore new positions that I'd never experienced before. And when you do that too, you usually develop questions. And when you have those questions from your own explorations, and then you ask coach about them and they answer it, it starts to click and it makes sense because you found it for yourself. So highly recommend sparring, play wrestling, experimenting, whatever you want to call it. It's one of the greatest tools you have. So for more on these positions, I do plan on making a breakdown. Uh, so I'll, I don't know if I'm going to call it Wrestling for Jiu-Jitsu Playbook, but it'll be this entire system. So it'll have all these positions. It'll have the micro positions that come from them. It'll have explanations and it'll have, uh, in, you know, videos for each position and drills and ways to get good at each one. So I'll have that out hopefully in the next few weeks here working on it. want to make sure you guys have you know, a system to follow to improve your wrestling for jujitsu. Who knows if it's the best one or the worst one, whatever. It's definitely not the worst one, I'll tell you that. But if you do this system and follow this, you will become a very good wrestler for jujitsu. And remember, the rest, wrestling level in jujitsu is not great right now, so it's a very good time to get good at it because you'll be a step above most other people. So I also had an opportunity to talk about this on the grappling podcast uh, last week. And we talked about basically everything in this article and more. And yeah, if you guys want to get started, right now I have an instructional that kind of covers some of these positions called Jiu-Jitsu Knee Care, Low Risk Takedowns Without Hitting Your Knees. Um, that one covers a lot of these positions, but I'll have uh, that playbook out soon with videos on how to do everything and how to get better at them and, and do the drills to improve. So that's it, guys. Catch me on the next vid. Peace.